So welcome everyone uh, for today's uh, talk in our interactive media and uh, game seminar series. So it's my pleasure to introduce Hanhua Zhuang, who is from uh, France. Um, he has a master's in biology and, and journalism and actually has worked in, uh, as a journalist for 10 years, primarily in the fields of science, technology and also environment. And uh, during that time he has also been for five years the chief uh, editor of No Life, which is one of the main uh, cable channels in, in France that is dedicated uh, to video games. So we are very fortunate uh, to have him here. Uh, well, thank you all for being here. Thank you a lot, MediaX, for inviting me here. Uh, uh, so I thank uh, Igmar, Sebastian, uh, Martha, and Jason. They're, they're not here today, but uh, they invited me to be a little part of the uh, MediaX community, and I'm very grateful for that. And yeah, thank you all for being here, of course. So now imagine yourself diving into an aquarium. That's what virtual reality feels like. It's a bit like scuba diving. You put on a mask, like this, and you plunge into a whole new world. It's about immersion, total and complete immersion. And now more than ever, virtual reality, or VR, seems to be everywhere, and for good reason. It's cheaper, easy to use, and all the big, big tech companies are getting into the act. Oculus Rift, the startup which created this headset, was bought by Facebook last year for $2 billion. And for only $20, you can buy this, a Google Cardboard, mm -hmm. and hook it to your phone. It's very low tech, but for a lot of VR simulations, it's enough. It works. And there's also many competitors, uh, like Samsung Gear VR, Sony Morpheus, or HTC Steam Vive. But first, What's virtual reality? Really? It's all an illusion. The trick is to make your brain believe that what you are experiencing is real. And technology has never been better at tricking our brains. There's stereoscopy, which gives you the feeling of depth, precise motion tracking, and especially head motion tracking. So when you turn your head around in a VR world, it feels natural. And the displays are always improving with better resolution and less lag. <coughs> now, what kind of media are we talking about? With VR headsets, you can watch 360 degree videos. Here, for example, is a Paul McCartney concert. It was filmed by the company called Giant VR. It's based uh, in Palo Alto. You can see here a 360 degree camera rig. It's an old model. But You'll see, the result is a video where you are free to turn around and to look and hear in every direction. It's realistic, <laughs> but it's a video, it's pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> you can move forward, you can move backward, uh, and you can't interact with your surroundings. To have interaction, you need a real-time 3D graphics environment. It's just like most recent video games. For instance, here's a demo of Eve Valkyrie, if it's working. Yeah. It's an upcoming space shooting game. As you can see, as the player turns her or his head around, the display follows the movement in a way that feels natural. What kind of application do you think virtual reality could have? Well, let me tell you, a lot. And they are very diverse. When it comes to virtual reality, the video games industry is certainly the most dynamic market. And now the advertisement, sorry, the advertisement and the movie industry are also getting excited with the technology. Sorry. Here's a VR advertisement for the last Ford Focus. It was designed by Capitola, 
a digital media agency based in the Netherlands. It's in Dutch, if you. And this is a screenshot of Lost, the short created by the Oculus Rift Story Studio. Now, what if you could travel without leaving home? With apps and websites like Google Street View here, and a card for a headset, you can visit national parks, museums, and monuments. Here is the Versailles Palace Gardens. It's in France, where I'm from. And what if you could shoot your own VR vacation movie? Now, 360-degree videos are getting very personal. For example, Jeroptic, it's a French startup, will soon launch this cheap and small 360-degree camera. Are you afraid of spiders? Well, with virtual reality, you can treat phobias. It's called virtual reality exposure therapy. Here's Kip, Kip Rizzo. He's a pioneer in virtual reality. At the University of Southern California, he helps war veterans. He's using VR to reduce post-traumatic stress symptoms. So as they are guided by a therapist, the patients confront the traumatic memories in a virtual and controlled simulation. Speaking of war, who here has ever witnessed a real bombing? Well, not too many of you, I hope. Now, look at this. Yeah. This video is from the website Orker. It presents the work of Noni de la Peña. She was a 20 years journalist, career journalist, and she's now a graduate fellow at the University of Southern California. De la Peña has become quite famous as an early adopter of using VR for journalism. It's what she calls immersive journalism. For this VR simulation called the Project Syria, De la Peña and her team used a footage of a bombing in Syria and they recreated the scene in 3D graphics. Now, what do you feel when you experience this kind of simulation? Empathy. As virtual reality is immersive and personal, intimate, news consumers feel more engaged with the stories. Two days ago, De La Peña and her team released a new VR experience, the title One Dark Night. This piece tells the story of the day Travian Martin was killed by watch volunteer George Zimmerman. It was produced from real recordings of 911 calls and from trial testimony. In one dark night, the user becomes a night witness of the story. Another example of using VR for journalism. A few months ago, the website Vice News produced Millions March. It's a piece in 360 degree video. The viewers are immersed in the protest that happened last December. They can see how thousands of people descended in the streets of New York to demand justice in the Ferguson case. Last year, the Des Moines Register, a daily newspaper from Iowa, created a harvest of change. It's an interactive feature combining 3D graphics environment and 360 degree videos. Harvest of Change tells the story of farm families in Iowa and how they navigate in a changing world in the context of climate change. Now, why? Why did I, as a science journalist, get interested in virtual reality? Well, here's why. This is Chrono Trigger. It's a Japanese role-playing game released from the, for the Super Nintendo console in 1995. Does anyone play this game? Cool. <laughs> was cool, isn't it? Well, back then I spent, let's say, way too much time exploring this virtual world. It's 
Hard science fiction, hard fantasy adventure, with time travels, post-apocalyptic future, dinosaurs, wizards, robots. Well, the story is compelling, the characters are lovable, and the universe is sophisticated. It's at that time as I was still a kind of a teenager, and so thanks to Chrono Trigger, that I realized how powerful video games could be as a medium. And today, video games are nearly 70 years old and they are in better shape than ever. It's a $90 billion global market, which is way above the music and the film industries. And furthermore, video games have the capacity to address serious topics and to present very complex stories. That's why I've been convinced for years that video games could inspire news companies to create innovative and engaging features. For instance, more and more news websites are interested, are getting interested in interactive graphic novels. What? They should look at games like the Walking Dead series or the other games from the Telltale uh, studios. These games are real pieces of art when it comes to interactive storytelling. One of the reasons why video games are so compelling is because they can be extremely immersive. In some of them, and especially in role-playing video games, the idea is to experience life as something or someone else. Just like here, in Skyrim, in this heroic fantasy game, which uses, as you can see, a first-person view, you are free to, well, do almost everything you want. Uh, and so you decide whether you want to be a villain or a hero. Virtual reality is the ultimate immersive experience. That is why it's an old dream for video game fans. And as for me, I've always been fascinated by this concept of immersion. Back in France, I worked for a weekly newspaper called Le Courrier International, which tra translates as uh, the International Mail. It's a part of the group Le Monde, uh, one of the main national newspapers. Three years ago, with a small team of writers and designers, I, uh, we co-created an interactive game related to journalism. The aim of the game was to explain how a newsroom worked. So it was not virtual reality, it was text-based. But you, the idea was for the users to experience life as journalists. As you can see, the pictures give a first-person view feeling. At each of these pages, the player have to make choices. Where am I going to seek out information? Or what's the best strategy to convince my chief editor to publish my story? And believe me, it's tricky. Even though it was a very simple and low-tech, the game was pretty successful. Now this year at Stanford, I'm part of the John S. Knight Fellowship. Within this program, which fosters journalism innovation, I decided to dive deeper into the concepts of immersion. And so I'm exploring the potential of virtual reality as a medium to present science information. Why focusing on science? Well, first, because I'm a science journalist, and I'm convinced that News, science news coverage and science communication could be improved. In the US, there's a shocking gap between science research and public belief. According to a recent poll, just half of the US adults believe that climate change is caused by human activity, while almost 90% of the scientists do. There's a similar gap on other science topics like human evolution. Meanwhile, the generation of people between 15 and 30 years old are becoming the largest group of information consumers. And guess what? They grew up with digital media and video games. Now, virtual reality simulations applied to science stories are a way to engage this huge audience. Now, do you remember these movies? They're from 1980s for Inner Space, 1960s, uh, Fantastic Voyage. The heroes were shrunk and injected inside a human body. Well, that's the kind of journey we could offer with virtual reality. Here's a demo for a motion tracking device called the Leap Motion. As you see, it tracks your hand and your fingers' movements. Now imagine the users playing with cells or viruses, even particles. It's an interesting tool to speak about cancer, virus Ebola, nuclear fusion. That's one of the ideas I'm working on. I call this field 
immersive science. This is Project Glass Brain. It's been, uh, it's been produced by Neuroscape Division of the Gazali Lab at the University of California, San Francisco. This 3D visualization shows brain activity in real time. And as you use a virtual reality headset, well, it feels like you are inside the brain. Glass Brain is now used for research. But imagine if we add a storytelling element, a voiceover, for example. It becomes an interactive feature for science communication. Here in Stanford, you have one of the best, if not the best, virtual reality research center in the world, the Virtual Human Interaction Lab, led by Professor Jeremy Badenson. The lab focuses on behavior and psychology studies, among other topics. For one of the demos, ba Badenson and his team asked this very interesting question. What if you experienced life as a coral reef? Well, you are obviously unable to move, even when a fish net begins to bump into you. And now, because of climate change and ocean acidification, your carbon skeleton weakens. At one point, it's just too fragile, fragile, and you collapse. It's a fascinating feature for science education. So these examples of VR simulations have already been created. If we tweak them a bit, they become interesting science communication features. But I'm also working on projects that I've started from scratch. Now, true fact, one of the people who inspired me to work in biology and then as a science journalist is documentary filmmaker Jacques-Yves Cousteau. When I was a kid, I was fascinated by his gorgeous and poetic uh, sea life uh, movies. Now, virtual reality can add a whole new dimension to wildlife documentaries. One of my upcoming VR projects is to shoot 360 degree videos in natural preserves, like the Ano Nuevo State Park between Halton Bay and Santa Cruz, for example. Imagine yourself on a virtual safari, surrounded by this incredible colony of sea elephants. This could be an amazing tool to promote parks and preserves. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's true, that's true. <laughs> but maybe one day we could have also the fish smell with it. Maybe one day. As we previously saw, a lot of people don't feel quite engaged with climate change issues. So here's an idea. If you could, if you saw the world the way a polar bear does, well, you would probably care a bit more about climate change. Well, so this is a rough prototype I co-created with uh, Capitola, the Dutch agency that created the Ford Focus advertisement I, I, I shown earlier. In this mini game, the player has to reach sea ice blocks to find its food, seals. And as the ice melts year after year, the, games, the game becomes harder and harder. Then by the year 2050, well, there's no ice anymore. So it's just impossible to survive. The final simulation may not be a game. Now imagine yourself here on Waikiki Beach, Hawaii. It's nice, isn't it? And now you are at the exact same place, but it's year 2100. Here's how it looks like. According to recent studies, Waikiki Beach could disappear because of climate change. In the VR simulation, we could leave this transformation by traveling into the future. This experience could start with a 360-degree video of Waikiki, as it is now. And then the video would morph into a 3D environment based on scientific projections. Now, that's from the ground. The situation in Waikiki seems pretty bad. But what if you could also have a point of view from the sky? That's already possible by combining virtual reality with another fascinating technology, drones. If you put a 360 degree camera on a quadcopter like this, you can virtually fly. It's a bit dizzy at first, you know, you can't see your ground, so like, 
But that, yeah, that's impressive. And here's an even cooler application of drones with VR, 3D mapping from the sky. This is the work of Ben Kramer. He's a talented journalism technologist and a drone expert. These are pictures shot above an excavation site in Turkey. You can see here a Roman bathhouse. Now look at this. Kramer used Agisoft Photoscan, a software that processes images into 3D models. And you can navigate inside using virtual reality. So now, remote places or sites where the public is not allowed are within reach. Combining VR and drones opens new opportunities to explore. And that's one of my next projects. And that's a good transition to speak about the how. Yeah, what do we need to create a virtual reality simulation and how much does it cost? Because, yeah, for the press industry, you may know, the price of these technologies, well, it's a big deal. A, a lot of news companies, they are not in good shape these days, and, well, they are reluctant to invest in these kind of uh, features. So for a 360-degree video, you need a 360-degree camera, obviously. They can cost from a few hundred dollars to more than $200,000. It depends on video quality, of course, the resolution, the frame rate. But the prices should decrease in the near future as the technology becomes more popular. Well, you can even build your own prototype like this one. It was created by the company Giant VR. Yeah. Just two questions. So Google uh, Street View it also has some sort of uh, uh, some a small amount of 3D because it can look at both mm -hmm. vertical and also on the ground. Yeah. So uh, does it have, as you mentioned, uh, here or is there sometimes fear that you can be more angles? It depends. Okay. It depends. Depends on the, as you say. Uh, depending on the camera, you can have just like a 180 degree thing or more 360 thing. It depends. And depending on the prices you can want to put on it. Thank you. And so yeah, of course, finally, for this kind of video, you need to uh, a special software to stitch the video together and edit them. That's a few hundred dollars more to create a virtual reality 3D graphic content now. VR developers mostly use Unity or Unreal, or End, Unreal. They are available for free under certain conditions. They are two software to, for 3D game development. If you don't have time, you don't want, or you don't know how to create 3D models, you can buy ready-to-use one on websites like uh, TurboSquid, like for example, my Polar Bay, I could have bought it here. And your schools, you also can use photo scanning software like uh, uh, Agisoft PhotoScan. Now, if you want a studio or an agency to realize your, sorry, your 3D VR projects, it would cost from a few thousand dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars. As far as the time is concerned, it can, it can be produced in at least two weeks, which is fast enough if you want to react on some major topics, now, up to three months and more. So of course, it really depends on how ambitious your project is. Is it a sophisticated environment, like a realistic forest uh, with plenty of animated trees and, and leaves? Is there a lot of interactions to input? Well, you have to think about these elements before you do even the storyboard of a project. So that was a very quick overview of how we can create VR simulation. The most important thing in VR is the storytelling. Before we speak about that, let's do some history. Do you remember this device? It's a virtual boy. It's a VR headset created by Nintendo 20 years ago. I bought one at that time. I was really excited, even, well, and it was very not easy to find one in the little town where I was in the south of France, so. But at the end, well, uh, it was bad. It was, yeah, not that good. So the term virtual reality is not new. It was coined in the 1980s by Jaron Lanier, computer science pioneer and philosopher. Then in the 1990s, at that time, a lot of people, well, including me, believed that VR was going to emerge. But the technology wasn't ready yet, and devices like the virtual boy failed. But today, virtual reality is just beginning to spread out in our life. 
from our smartphones for living room. So as a medium, VR is still a fresh territory for a lot of storytellers. Most of the VR simulations presented until now well, usually don't last more than a few minutes, but they usually have a great wow effect. For example, this demo, wow, I'm being burned to death by smog. Yeah. Well, it's called Thief in the Shadows. It's a scene from the Hobbit movie, but transferred into virtual reality. So you're inside, you are inside the treasure room guarded by this dragon smog, and, as you, and you play Bilbo, the hero. It's pretty cool, but well, first it's not an original story, and it's very short. The challenge now for most of the VR creators is to manage to go beyond this wow effect and to tell a compelling story in virtual reality. And these simulations can be challenging for storytelling. Sorry. One of the cornerstones, for example, of 360-degree videos is that you can look and hear in every direction. Now think about it. This is a real nightmare for a film director. Yeah, because a movie director doesn't want you to look around when the action takes place in front of you. You know, Sergio Leone wants you to pay attention to Eddie Wallach's incredible face and to Clint Eastwood's hands as he reaches out to his gun. It's how film directors tell stories. And most of the fund fundamentals of video making for TV broadcasts, for instance, come from cinema. That's why also why that's why also, sorry, even in video games, during the cutscenes, the in-game movies, well, the player usually cannot control the point of view and there's less interaction, some QT maybe. But. So to create VR content, and especially 360 degree videos, we need to develop a new mindset. For, for example, how long should a VR content be? The 360 degree videos could be short, after all, the length, the average length of TV news packages or popular YouTube videos is uh, around two minutes and a half. But if we think about creating long format movies, so here's what could be the answer. This is Polar Seas 360 Degree. It's an online interactive documentary produced by Deep Inc., a Canadian studio. It's about the loss of sea ice in the North Pole caused by climate change and its impact on the people living there. This innovative documentary shows us how we can combine 360 degree video sequences and traditional videos like interviews or animations uh, like you just saw. For the VR interactive environments in 3D, the question is different. A lot of video games experts are already ahead of the game. They know how to interact interactions and game mechanisms into the storytelling. They also know perfectly how to tell a story with a user in first person view. And now, as virtual reality is getting real in the gaming industry, well, video game creators are already thinking about new ways to play and new ways to engage the players with a story in a VR world. So once again, as storytellers, as journalists, as communication experts, we should get inspired by what is done in the video game industry. Well, in the end, the most important question we should ask ourselves when creating a VR experience is what kind of story we should tell in a virtual reality world. Because VR is not just a way to visualize, uh, is a new way, I mean, to visualize 3D content, or just a new interface 
to watch movies. It's about immersion. It's about the concept that the VR community calls presence. It's when you are so into a VR world that you forget about the, med med the medium. That you forget that you are in the matrix. And you manage to do that thanks to the technology, by inputting compelling interaction and game mechanisms, and finally by telling a story that is a perfect fit for virtual reality. For us, journalists, communication experts, that means that we should pick wisely the stories we want to bring into VR. And well, you know, because they are not cheap to produce too. So, so virtual reality has to add something meaningful in the story. Having a, story, uh, having a 360 degree camera here, for example, uh, or for a press, uh, press conference, well, it's, it's pointless, it's meaningless. Uh, you know, because we want the users to focus on the person behind the podium. So in virtual reality, we have to think even more about the user's experience. She or he will be at the center of the scene. So virtual reality is about immersion, it's about engagement, it's about empathy. It can make us feel more involved, more important and global issues. So the technology gives us new tools and new ways to inform people, especially in science. It's valuable for news companies, museums, schools, science labs. And we are just beginning to tap into the VR's potential for creative storytelling. So let's put on our mask and let's dive into the aquarium. Thank you.